just gonna get this camera set up. I like to record live even if nobody shows up because then I don't have to edit video. So it works out really, really well. I just hope the screen is gonna be bright enough and all of that stuff. I'm gonna plug in This came a minute early, and I'm ready to go. Get myself, get myself situated, and I'm hoping to be able to see the chat if anybody is here and anybody is chatting. One watching now, that's probably me. All right, I'm gonna give this just one minute while I get this figured out. It's been a while since I've gone live. All right, there's two watching. <laughs> Me and someone else. Uh, you should be able to <laughs> Hi. Yes, I can see the chat. Yay. Tell me how to pronounce your name with a hard C or a soft C. Is it sissy? All right, I think I need to adjust my phone a tiny bit. And can you hear me okay? I know there's a delay, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask anyways. And Brenda, Brenda saying, hi, everyone. That's three of us, Brenda, including you and me. <laughs> it's been so long since I've gone live on YouTube that I just kind of forgot how to get all set up here. I'm just looking at the screen in front of me. The screen in front of me that shows the live is different than what I'm seeing on my phone itself. So that's interesting. I would probably want to make it a little closer if I had a choice, but oh yeah, Brenda saying more more are coming now. That's okay. I it's okay if nobody comes, but going live is a great way to not have to edit video later. So I I like to do this um, in order to make it a little easier to watch it later for people. I'm gonna try not to have too many uh, interruptions answering questions maybe just every few minutes instead of trying to read the chat constantly but definitely ask questions if you have them during the live and then on every few minutes I'll scroll through and see and then if I miss your question like if there's too much uh, conversation going on then uh, I might miss a question which is fine but then just ask it again so I'm prepping some brushes for my next newsletter freebie. So I thought I'd show those first. I have that one and this one took me forever, but I'm gonna give that one away. And this one is super simple. This one took me a while and I'm not even sure I like it. <laughs> and that one, I don't know, it's pretty rigid, so. Um, but I just wanted to show you lots of different options and we're going to be doing something much more symmetrical, uh, kind of like this, not quite like this. You can do whatever you want though, following the steps that, um, that I talk about during the live, you can draw whatever you want, as long as you do certain things. So, and you can use any brush you want. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to do a 10 by 10 canvas. So tap the plus sign. I go to inches, 10 by 10, 300 DPI, and tap create. Now, I'm, it doesn't matter what color profile you're on. We're just doing black and white. But um, uh, generally, I just always, everything defaults for me to the first sRGB um, profile underneath the display P3 profile. All right, uh, I made it 10 because it's gonna be a little easier to fill the page. <laughs> that flowery one was just took me forever. I was drawing and drawing and flourishing and flourishing and 
took a long time. So we're going to do a simple thing that will help people who might be beginners learn a little bit more about the um, symmetry tool and everything. I'm sure some of you already know all these things, but maybe you're just here to learn how to make the brush itself. Hi, hi everybody. All right, so start with a square canvas, uh, at least 10 inches, I would say. I do 10 or 12, generally speaking. You're gonna be making a repeat pattern, so don't be scared. A lot of people are like, ah, you can do it, I tr trust me. And we're just gonna use some default brushes today. You can use monoline if you want. I would recommend tapping on it and going to taper and turning the taper off. I don't know why Procreate adds a taper in a monoline brush, but they do. Uh, you don't need to do the touch taper because that's only for when you're drawing with your finger. But this pressure taper, just turn it completely off up here and up here. This won't do anything if there's no taper on up here, so you don't need to worry about that. And then I like to go to properties and bump the brush behavior maximum size up. Um, you probably won't need to for this particular thing, um, but... That's kind of the, the fun things I like to do with the monoline brush. And now you can see it's really big. And now you have this big option. Um, maybe you can change the, the um, what is it, stabilization? Oh, it's pretty high. I don't know if I did that or if that's default. So I have it on 66 for the streamline. So calligraphy is an option. And... Um, so, so one of the things I was going to mention is if you're going to make a brush, I'm going to go back to the other examples. If you're going to make a brush with really solid uh, black and white, so we make brushes with black and white, then when you use this brush, unless you have some other brush settings that make it a little bit more textured and things like that, when you use it, you're, you're going to be able, you're going to have this very solid look. Now with this one, I did end up with a, a textury look with the brush settings, and I'll show you that, but I still see the very firm edges. If you make your pattern with a brush that is textured, so that's just dry ink, so that's the pattern, then when you have a brush, that brush is going to have the texture as well. But then you can't, you can't really switch it to making it a very solid brush. Whereas if you make a really solid brush, and meaning like with a monoline or something, you can texturize that later. You can uh, lay down your design and then erase some from it with a textury brush or you can change the brush itself. So I tend to use, um, well, kind of depending on the overall look I want, I tend to do some really solid and some with a textured brush. So definitely play around with the, with both later when, when you're doing your own later. Today, I guess I'm not committing, am I? I'm not committing to one particular um, <laughs> brush to use. Um, I just added a few layers. So let's commit. Let's commit to monoline. How about that? So that was in calligraphy and monoline. And I'm just going to do a small size. Since it's monoline, I can drag and drop and fill. So the other thing I'm going to do is turn on the symmetry. So go to the wrench tool and go to canvas, drawing guide, turn it on. And then you can edit drawing guide and go to symmetry, options, and let's do radial. And tap done. Make sure you can see the lines. I'm looking on the screen, it looks like I can see the lines. All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and do kind of a tiled brush. I'm going to drag and drop a color down here on a bottom layer, any color, and fill the whole layer. And then I'm going to select it, rotate it, and fit to canvas. 
just get, gonna delay a little bit so people can follow along. And now I'm gonna turn the opacity down by tapping the N and turn the opacity down. This is just a guide. So I'm also going to two finger swipe to the right to alpha lock that layer so I don't act accidentally add art to that layer. So this is a great guide because if you design anything within this diamond and then you duplicate it and you use that same design uh, for the whole um, pattern, so exactly like this, you know that your design isn't going to overlap. So to make a design like the one I just showed you, I made the design and then I duplicated it and pushed it into the four corners. So I had one here, you know, one that was all cut up and, and divided up into the corners and the other one in the middle. And because I designed it within this diamond, then you don't get any overlap. In my advanced uh, repeat pattern class, I talk about overlapping and it looks really good when you do flowers and leaves and overlapping. Um, but for this, we're not gonna overlap. Or you can if you want. Hi, Jean. Hi, everybody. Oh, Gabby's there too. Gabby. Gabby's in Germany and she was on my live call in the community last night. It was last night for me. It was breakfast for her and we watched her make sourdough bread from scratch. And now I want to go to her house. <laughs> okay, so I'm on monoline brush. I have this diamond guide and I'm going to go up a layer. I'm going to tap it and turn on drawing assist. Now it says assisted. And since we chose radial, we have, you know, it's going to do, it's going to do lots. So decide on some sort of design. How about let's start in the middle. Do a kind of a petally look there. You can do anything you want here. Just stay in that diamond. I'm going to focus a little bit on the top here. Maybe put a little circle here. Ooh, how about a heart? That's cute. I don't think that heart is going to show up enough. I need to go up and down more. I can drag and drop and fill these spaces. Tap and hold the eraser if you want to get that same brush for the eraser and clean up these edges. I'm not going to make them pointy, but I do want them to taper nicely. I'm always welcome, Gabby. Thank you. <laughs> I might take you up on that someday. Maybe do a big European tour. Go see Brenda, everybody. Well, then I have to go to Australia, too. Bummer, huh? Oh, so I'm just, I'm just having fun. Just have fun. You don't have to do just like I'm doing. Just have fun filling in some teardrop shapes or whatever you want. If you go right to the edge of the diamond in the background, then it will touch um, the tile that you make for the next step. Or, well, it'll be the same tile. So you could, you know, I don't know, diamonds aren't really, diamonds aren't really part of this uh, look here, but if I put a half a diamond there, then when it is repeated, it should fill in the other half of that diamond. So we can test that. I'm not sure how it'll look there right where it meets, but we can fix that later. And I might erase some. Maybe I can't do super tiny details uh, on a brush because it will um, get a little bit, you know, messy when it's teeny tiny. This is kind of tricky going right on the line because you basically you're having you have to get right on the line in order for it to to really look like a circle. 
you can mess with the symmetry if you want to um, make that more perfect. I might add more dots here. Maybe not quite that big. And I think I'm gonna add a nice big dot in the center. I'm gonna try to get it right in the center. You could turn symmetry off and just do the one in the center. So this at this step, <clears throat> I'm gonna talk so you guys can kind of get caught up. At this step, you could technically be doing this on multiple layers. And I just realized I should have been doing this in black also, but I can change that later. Um, multiple layers are totally fine. And I'll show you why. Well, let's go ahead and do another layer. I might erase that heart. I don't like that heart. I don't think it fits with our polka dot theme here. Maybe I'll do a dot instead. Nope. Um, so if you had a more intricate design and you wanted to, if you really liked part of it, but you weren't sure you were going to like the next part of it, you want to do another part on another layer, um, so that you don't have to, if you, if you goof and you want to revert some of it, you don't have to mess with the one layer that you really did like, for example, um, do as many layers as you want. So let's say I'm going to do that. I'm going to do something else here on another layer. Maybe I'll do a couple more dots down here just as an example. Oh, so I don't have symmetry on. So tap and turn on symmetry. Yeah, so let's say, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to like that. So... I did it on a separate layer just in case I didn't like it. Um, sometimes you might not want to merge those layers. So my point is you can have multiple layers going on over here. Um, and then for this next step, all you have to do is turn off the background, turn off your diamond because we don't want that. Oh, I need to make everything black too. So I'm going to alpha lock by two finger swiping to the right on both of my layers and tap black. So the, in the brush, uh, grain source and shape source. Everything's black and white. Shades of gray work, but and they this will get turned into a gray, but it just means it's going to be more transparent. So um, you might not always want that. So you can change transparency when you use the brush later. So it's best to just make it a full transparent brush or full opaque brush. Uh, fill the layer with black. Fill the layer with black. Okay, so now I have black and I have multiple layers, but it doesn't matter because I just need to three finger swipe down and copy all. Now, if everything was on one layer, I would just duplicate it over here. So that's your two options there. I can go ahead and turn my background back on and I'm gonna group my layers and turn them off. When you paste, it doesn't matter if you're on a blank layer, it's just going to paste right to the layer above wherever you are. So three finger swipe down and paste. And this is a good example of why we need corner marks. Do you see the border around my design? Because my design doesn't go all the way to the edge, my selection doesn't go all the way to the edge. And in order to move things around really well in Procreate for repeat patterns, we need it to select the entire canvas. And this is all happening because we're separate from the background. Um, so in a regular pattern, uh, gosh, I, I just posted um, some, like a three in a row. I'll post it on Instagram today. On my Pinterest, I just posted um, three mini videos that part one, part two, part, part three on making repeat patterns and um, keeping it separate from the background. In a black and white thing, it doesn't matter, 
but later you might want to use this for something else and just use the black and it will matter so um, so we're just going to go ahead and stick with what I always do and keep things separate from the background if you were attaching everything to a background then um, the Procreate is going to select the entire canvas size right so you don't need to worry about these corner marks but this is separate from a background and I'm just going to put corner marks on so I can I'm going to pick a contrasting color so I can have ink pixels to all four edges top right bottom and left corner marks corner marks corner marks they're the key to all these repeat patterns and now when I select you can see my boundary box is around the entire canvas. All right, so you could, you could make two designs right now. We're just gonna keep it at one design. So you could, um, well, let's, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. So we're gonna duplicate this. Uh, this is technically the original right here, but this is, is pretty good. It's basically like an original. So I'm gonna keep duplicating this bottom one so it's not like making copies of copies. And I need five total because I'm gonna keep one in the center and I'm gonna push four to the four corners. So select one, one layer, select it this way, and then make sure snapping is on. I keep distance at max and velocity at five. Don't grab anywhere near the blue nodes. You can grab anywhere on the canvas, in the middle, over here, and we're gonna slide it to one to each corner. So when you're in the right spot, you're gonna have gold lines in the center. Can everybody see that? I hope so. If that's tricky and you keep seeing it go blue, gold, blue, gold, and it's really having a hard time, the thing you need to do is turn off everything except the one layer at a time that you need to move. Gold lines both directions. You'll get the hang of it. If you have just, if you have a very simple pattern like this, it's and you have those corner marks on, it is um, pretty easy just to go ahead and keep all of your layers on. If you have other art that's, you know, got little things on it, um, the snapping gets a little fussy. Also, if you tap and hold like this in order to keep one layer at a time on, this doesn't work. The program does not consider this as a good way to keep one layer showing. It's really just meant for you to do a quick check on a layer. So, um, for example, if you had a bunch of other crazy stuff going on on other layers, but you went like this to turn it all off, and then you want to drag and drop this, drag it and snap it into the right spot, the snapping is going to still recognize everything that's on all those other layers. I wrote to Procreate about it, and I was like, yeah, this is a problem. And they said, nope, it's just how it is. Okay, so push one to each corner, getting those gold lines. So I'm not getting the gold lines. I'm getting them this way. And I was able to move it just a little bit more to get them both. So I just, I was, I was just a teeny tiny bit off. Um, also, when you have a selection, if you have it in place, if you have it in place and you tap the screen, it will nudge it. And then if you deselect it, it will be out of place by one pixel or however many times you tap. So get it into place and then deselect it. All right, I'm gonna turn this center one off and you can see we have our corner marks all four of these that we move to the corners can be merged in, and then you can just grab these and move them off the page. So um, this is what I was gonna explain earlier. You don't have to have the exact same design in the middle right now. 
So you can have this one that you designed first, push it to the corners, and then design an entirely different one. I would go to a new layer and, in, and design something entirely different right here. So I'm not gonna do that today, but that is an option. And, and what it's gonna end up looking like is a checkerboard, a diagonal checkerboard of two different patterns. So right now we just have that fifth one right here, the original one that was in the center. I can see we have a lot of dots in the corners. The diamonds are lining up the um, ends over here and here, so I think it's okay. At this point, you could add some more things in here if you want. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to have it look more like a tile with those gaps. All right, so if you go back to your original design, there's a couple things I didn't mention. One is that we did not go off the edge of the canvas at all. So that's one thing to remember because Procreate, Procreate will crop. So don't go off the edge unless you're doing it in very particular ways and my classes talk about all of that. So keep it on the edge and then um, generally speaking, you're gonna want to focus on the middle uh, vertical and horizontal uh, in your initial design because once you uh, put your corner marks on and duplicate and push to the four corners, these outer edges were the middle before you did the pushing to the four corners. So you won't be able to edit those outer edges anymore once you get to this stage. So at this stage, you focus on those without, I mean, this one's symmetrical, but generally speaking, you would try to not make it look like a plus sign, <laughs> for example. Um, and I talk about that in the little uh, short videos I made that I'll put on Instagram today. All right, so that's our complete design. I'm just gonna look at the chat. So if you're new, if you're uh, joining late, um, you're welcome to ask questions in the chat. I'll check it every few minutes. Late to the party. <laughs> so Rhonda, square canvas. I used symmetry and designed something in the middle. Um, I used a diamond in the background to just have as, as a guide for where to keep my tile. Anyways, yeah, you can you can get caught up. Oh, I almost missed something. So this uh, outer edge here, I need to get rid of the corner marks on this one. So you can just erase or you can select it and cut it out. All right, I can go ahead and turn my grid lines off, my drawing guide. So now we're just gonna three finger swipe down and copy all. I am copying the black and the white background for making a brush. I think that you don't have to. Um, I've seen other people doing PNGs with no background and things like this, but this works. So let's go to make a new brush. By copying this, oh, you know what? Let's do one more thing. Let's check to make sure we don't have any seams and gaps. So turn the background off after all and three fingers swipe down and copy all. We can turn it back on and we can turn these off. Three fingers swipe down and paste. So now we have all of that on one layer and I'm gonna select it and snapping is still on so it will snap right to the center. And I'm gonna make four of those duplicating that first one every single time. And I'm gonna swipe right on all four, or sorry, I'm going to swipe right on two of them to slide two of them up, gold lines, gold lines, and then I'm going to deselect one and slide one of those over and go down to one of the bottom ones and slide one of those over. And from here, you really, in general, with repeat patterns, you want to check your seams. So you're going to check the center 
by zooming in and making sure you don't have any gaps or any offsets. If you do, that's because you likely nudged and who knows what point in the process that happened and you might have to really go back and probably start pretty early um, with figuring out where that happened. So I can merge these. I can actually um, use this for my green source in my brush or I can use this. I think I'm going to go ahead and use this one. So three finger swipe down and copy all. I've got the background on again. I'm going to turn these off and go to a new layer so I'm ready to test my brush in a minute. Tap the brush and go all the way up till you get this plus sign. Sometimes it's a little fussy and you have to really do this a lot. Tap plus and name your brush set patterns by Jen. <laughs> and then tap the plus sign here to get a brand new brush. And we're gonna go paste that design that we just copied into the grain source. So tap grain, edit, import, and paste. Tap once to get rid of this menu. Two finger tap to invert this. Your brush is going to draw where the white is. So you could have two versions of these brushes and have the color that you're choosing be what goes down on the page in the background. Or if you have it like this, the color you choose in your palette is going to be where this white is showing. Always tap done so it saves. And then, um, yeah, you can just test your design size, your scale of the design. The scale can be changed right here. Um, every time I pick up my pencil and put it back down, it's not lining up. So I'm gonna turn off the offset jitter. Now, every time I pick up my pencil and put it back down, it's lining up. What else? So right now it's on cropped, which means that, so the zoom here, that means that no matter what my brush size is, this is going to be the scale. This is going to be how big my pattern is. If you bring this all the way down to follow size, then it's going to, the scale of the pattern is going to follow the size of the brush. So as your brush gets bigger, your pattern gets bigger. Those both come in handy at different times. So you can just edit this anytime you want and uh, make it how you want it. And then all the stuff in between is kind of a combination. So um, is your brush going to get significantly bigger as your brush size, is your scale going to get significantly bigger as your brush size gets bigger and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose follow size for zoom and the scale now is quite small so I'm gonna bump my scale up and the scale is um, well we can we might have to come back in and change that in a little bit and then tap done we're gonna make more changes so remember I'm on a fresh layer I'm on a bright color and let's test the brush so I have some pressure sensitivity I don't want that right now with this particular brush I have, um, when I go smaller, it's really small. When I go bigger, it's pretty big. Not bad, looks really pretty. But let's make some more edits. So let's tap on that again. And let's go to, um, let's go to properties and bump the brush behavior size, maximum size up. Now my preview is giant over here. You can see my pattern is really big. <laughs> so those are things that you can play with. If you want that setting to be this, um, what it is, um, you can change your preview size and that changes what you see in the window here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and keep my setting big, but then go back to green and turn my green down, the scale down. Now when I'm on the big size, it's not quite as big, it's still pretty big. So you can see how much flexibility you have in just the scale and the size uh, of your brush itself. Now this is teeny tiny, so I need to go back into uh, properties and bump the preview back up. All right, there's that. Um, let's go to shape source. So the reason this is so solid, like a monoline brush, is because of this. So we can edit that, import, and go to source library and pick a, you know, textury shape source. If it shows up as black on white, then just do the same thing and two finger tap to switch it. Make sure you tap done. And I don't know if you can see this, but I can see that this exact shape is just going do, 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 do. It's not moving at all and it's making it kind of a zipper look. So I want that shape to be rotating around as I draw. So I'm just gonna make it scatter. You can see it doing things over here. And I don't know, those two are kind of similar in my opinion. You don't really need to do both of these, but play around with those so you don't get that zippery look. And then when you use this brush, it's, not, it's gonna have this shape being all over the place as it's going down. If you go to rendering, you can also go to light glaze and have it be, you know, nice texture like I was showing you with my brushes earlier. All right, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and tap done and see how we like that. So here's what we had before and here's what we have now. So this is super light pressure. This is with a little bit more pressure. And where you're going to really want to play with the scale is, you know, you can see my brush cursor. It's about this big. If you need to have a certain scale, but you don't want that scale to be with a giant brush, right? You can be messing around with um, the brush size, um, brush, let's see, properties, brush behavior, size, as well as the scale of the design so that you can make... And real, let's say you want to fill the whole canvas with this design and you don't want to sit here going right you can make it a bigger brush so that it's a bigger cursor bigger brush shape and then um, it'll be easier to fill in a page <laughs> all right so I just three finger scrub if you don't know that you can clear and I am going to tap on that as, again and go to Apple Pencil. And the reason it starts out really light is because the opacity for pressure is turned up. So that means you need to press harder to get more opacity. So if you don't want that, you can see how it changes over here. Um, you can turn that off or turn it down. So if you want more consistency, you just turn it all the way off. And then um, everything you do it doesn't matter how hard you press, it's, it's gonna have consistency. And you might not be able to see that, it still has the texture. And that's because of that texture shape source that we chose. All right. Let's see, grain, rendering. You could do some color dynamics. Um, one thing for pressure is just to bump up, so color pressure, bump up the hue a little bit, and then with pressure, it's gonna change a little bit. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. I have lots of classes on all of that. Um, and then I can't remember if I published it yet, but I also have a, a, a short video coming out about the um, secondary color in the color pressure setting. Dynamics we didn't do. I don't think we really need dynamics for this brush. All right, I think we're good. And then um, if you go to about this brush, this is really important. So you're gonna name your brush by tapping up there. Gems, uh, flower, tile, 
One, I really hate naming brushes creatively. So if you have a description of what that looks like, that's a good place to put it. Um, you can tap here and type your name. And you can sign here. Doing all of those things doesn't mean anything at all unless you add an image here. Because even if you create a reset point and tap done, if you were to sell that brush or you know give a break, I give my brushes away, um, someone could come in and they could edit all three of those fields. You can always edit the name but the photo is what really locks it in. So tap on that and I created a stamp brush. Um, there's a lot of information out there online so you can go look up how to create a stamp brush. Basically a square canvas like we just made. Do whatever you want on that canvas and uh, go find a stamp brush and duplicate it. <laughs> I don't know. And then um, uh, put that in the shape source of your stamp brush. So we, we just imported the grain source. This was the grain source, but for your stamp brush, you make a shape source. Anyways, make an image with your logo or your name or something. So I'm gonna go to my photos. So there's my image right there. This for some reason always highlights um, tap create reset point and save and done. All of those steps have to be done. Then when you go back in it, you can see I can no longer edit any of these. And that was only because of this. I can edit this, but I can't edit these. The reset point, all of all that is, is, um, is saying, okay, I'm pretty happy with this brush. I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. And then later go, I'm gonna go play with some color dynamics. And um, so I, I, have the, I have the reset point saved. I'm gonna play with some color dynamics and um, you know, I'm just gonna play around and tap done and then you play around and you decide, oof, no, I don't, I don't like that. But let's say you actually messed with a whole bunch of these or some other settings and you decide, uh, I don't like that at all. Uh, if you don't remember what all the settings were at, you can just tap reset this brush and it'll go back to the most recent point that you created the reset point for. So if you do like the new brush after making a bunch of changes, then you create a new reset point, and then that's the, the one that it'll go back to if you need it to. I'm gonna look at the chat real quick. Oh, we're doing okay on time. Thanks, Jean. All right, if you, if you got here late, it'll all be on YouTube later. Uh, it takes a little time to process. And if you are here late, I'll show you what I'm gonna give away. I was gonna try to get it ready before uh, this. <laughs> so, oh, I'll give a little plug. So go sign up for my newsletter and then you'll get this, um, some new pattern brushes very soon. So this one, I might make some changes to it. It's a little bit stiff for me. Uh, this flowery one, this very simple tile, just like we did almost. This is the reason why I didn't have the freebies already up and ready for you because this took forever. This one was super fun and fast. Um, so this one, I don't think I kept all the versions of it. So I was telling you about how you should kind of focus on the two um, middle lines. So if you're not doing a super tiled brush like we just did, uh, just get the guides on. You can go to 2D grid um, and just max out the size. You're not using the symmetry necessarily, although you can. and uh, make sure you have everything you want to be along the middle parts here and um, without it looking like a big plus sign this one is pretty close to looking like a plus sign but since it's all swirly I ended up getting away with it 
And then this is what you would copy and paste and move to the corners and then fill in the center. So I don't have that step, I just, I merged them. So that center is, is, is I think I duplicated part of it and moved it and then just filled in all the other spaces. All right, but even at this stage, when you're filling in the center, you cannot touch the edges. So if you go over an edge at any point, then you're gonna have a blunt edge in your design. Whoops, I have a little line here. Did I just do that? Now I need to go fix that. Um, you're, if you do that at any point, you are going to um, have a little cut, a little kind of sharp cut edge on your design. Um, because anything that goes off the edge, oh, sorry, my dog's scratching. Anything that goes off the edge has to perfectly come back on, on the other side. So there's a lot of ways to do that, um, but it is something you have to be really careful about and are putting the corner marks on and moving things to the four corners, getting the gold lines in the middle, that's one way to um, make sure that everything is going to line up when it's going off the edge and meeting up on the other side. If you want two versions of the brush, you duplicate and save with the photo. Yes, so here's the thing. Once you have a brush that is why isn't that saved? That's a glitch. Do you see that? <laughs> it didn't save my information. I'm going to look at the ones I did earlier today. Oh, maybe was I doing it to this brush? No. Um, okay. Well, here's a good example of how I didn't add the photo yet. And here I can, I can change my name here and I can change my signature here. I, anybody can edit that and make it look like it's their own. So I'm gonna add another uh, photo and see what's going on here. I'm gonna finish, oh. Um, so what I was getting at was if you do, if you're planning to make several brushes, this isn't even the name of the brush, okay. Um, if you're planning to make several brushes, if you get all of that set in your brush and then you just duplicate it, you don't have to do it every single time. So yes, if you plan to make two versions of the same brush or even totally different brushes, um, just duplicate it and then go back into it. And then the signature is there, the photo is there, your name is there, and all you need to do is rename it because that is something you can still do. It's always just gonna add a little one at the end every time you duplicate. I'll, I'll make it a two. And then you just create a new reset point and tap save. So maybe you wanna go and edit the grain. Um, sorry, you don't need to tap import. Maybe you wanna reverse it with the two finger tap and tap done and tap done. Then you have a completely different brush. I'm gonna to go to, up to a new layer. So here you have a brush where the background is coloring on the color you've chosen. Whereas the other version the design that we drew is what is getting filled in. So now you have two versions of that brush and you didn't have to do all of that. But again, even if it's an entirely different brush, if you just, if you know you're making another pattern brush, you won't have to go in and change the grain, you, you know, or you do, the grain is what you do change. You won't have to go in and change the shape. You won't have to go change the opacity or the properties, all those things that we did. Um, you can still, and you might want to if you want a different scale and all of that, but you won't have to add all of those personal details to call that brush your own. They're, they're gonna be there. Um, but that doesn't explain why this one just defaulted back to this. Interesting, did I not do it on this one? Maybe I did it on a different one. Oops. Not camera. I'm gonna check it now. I'm gonna go out and back in. 
Yeah, it's maybe I just did it on a different one. I'll, I'll be looking back <laughs> at my recording. Did I do it on this one? Is that what I did it? No. <laughs> I'll be looking back at the recording going, which one did I edit? I think it was this one. So now it's working. <laughs> so yeah, just keep duplicating that brush that you've got it all set up as a pattern brush and then you can just keep changing the grain source. Any other questions? Thank you for coming everybody. This will be, after it's done processing the video, it will be uh, on YouTube and I'll see you later. Um, oh, and the brushes that you're seeing that we didn't do today, those will all be uh, free for newsletter subscribers uh, later today. And happy Mother's Day weekend. All right, see you later. Thank you. Oh, I'm just seeing the thank yous coming in. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you.